And what's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is your boy Cheap Ludes and I am here to talk about the market. So, this weekend has been interesting for the overall market in NBA 2K21. My team, I swear one day I'm going to put on the money suit and do some mad money type stuff, but uh, man, the props in the set are just so expensive. We got these moments challenges, which I talked about a little bit. And, I mean, you can still make some decent MT if you haven't off of some of these cards if you do own them in your collection. The time's kind of passed for, like, Jalen Brown. And, by the way, if you weren't aware, Series 2 Facundo Composito is the only one that works for that challenge. That's why a lot of people weren't getting it, which I swear the first day it did not say that. I swear it said just Facundo Composito. I don't know. Usually you guys are pretty good about jumping in the comments and letting me know, like, if I miss something or anything like that, no one did. So I think that I'm not alone in the fact that that didn't say that. So Tim Hardaway Jr. is still going for a pretty decent amount. Um, you can still get about 10 G's for a gold Tim Hardaway Jr. Just because gold cards really don't drop in any of the promo packs anymore. 2K kind of messed with the odds and emeralds and stuff are the only things that drop. For Silver Facundo, you can still get a good amount, 10 Gs at least. Um, so if you do have that card not locked in like I foolishly did, you can get a good amount for him as well. Like I said, roughly around 11 Gs, which is super solid. And that's way more than a normal Silver would go for, so you should definitely sell them at that price point. I highly recommend not keeping them. Um, sometimes when a Silver or Gold is only worth like 3 Gs, I recommend getting rid of or not getting rid of them. But when it's 11, yeah. You can get about 5 Gs for Rui Hachimura. Um, which I mean if you have that gold card that's a good price to get rid of him for as far as Kevin Durant the general like normal Kevin Durant's from the live series set are going for about 5 or 6k this one's going for about 8 um, and then I'll talk about the diamond one and the pink diamond one as well so Tim Hardaway Jr. Heat Check this card you can get about 20k for just because this is the highest tiered Tim Hardaway available and typically a lot of times when people see these XP challenges they'll go straight for what is the highest rated card that possible for that player? Heat check Facundo is still going for about 10 Gs, which leads me to believe a lot of people do not realize that you need the live series 2 only to do that challenge, since people are still buying this card. You can get about 9K for him, which is a super solid price. Kevin Porter Jr. as well has that challenge. You can get about 7 Gs for a heat check Kevin Porter Jr., Honestly, though, it's just better off to go for the Ruby, and I think he's a Flash series one, but I'll talk about him in a bit. Um, where is Kevin Durant? Is he Flash too? I think he might be Flash. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, he is. Okay. So, if you're going to spend 7 to 10k on a Kevin Durant, you'd be better off spending that going for either this diamond or the pink diamond. Uh, the reason for that is these two will at least help you in the future. Personally, I would splurge the extra couple Gs on the pink diamond Kevin Durant. The reason for that is there's not a lot of Oklahoma City Thunder players available, at least at this point. So grabbing this Kevin Durant might help you for future challenges in addition to like spotlight sims and stuff like that. So definitely going to be a better option. Now, if you don't want to spend 16K, I totally understand, but if you're going to spend 10K at least, it's probably better to spend an extra couple thousand just for a card that'll make you more MT or get you a reward card in the future. Um, as far as Kevin Porter Jr., like I said, it's better to just go get this Ruby card as opposed to grabbing like a heat check or a 21 current version, just because I would say if you have to pay five or 6K for this Kevin Porter Jr., he's actually worth it. Um, shout out to that guy that despises my channel because I ranked Kevin Porter Jr. too low in a tier list. I ranked him a uh, high C tier, low B tier for a Ruby card. Apparently Kevin Porter is better than that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but that guy has a lifelong vendetta against my channel because of that tier list I did two months ago. Um, LaMarcus Aldridge is going for a decent price. I mean, you can get about 25, 24. Uh, I guess he's a little lower. He's down to like 20 right now. It's still a good price for this card. If you do have him, I would sell him for 19k, especially if you already have, you know, Yurkic. Um, you don't really need him for anything specifically after this. Um, he's not going to get any moments challenges or, th or anything anytime soon just because he's retired now. So there's no real reason to hold on to that Aldridge card, especially if you have Nurkic already. Russell Westbrook. Look, this card is way too expensive. He 
I actually like Westbrook in 2K this year, and from what I understand, this card is actually really good over on next gen. Um, I still don't think he's worth that price. He does play really good defense, so he can actually, as far as like small point guards go, he's one of the only people that can defend against Ben Simmons, in my opinion, as far as little point guards, besides like him and Rondo. But he's still not worth that price. Blake, Big Blake is worth 200k. Now, if he goes up to around 300, which is what he's been going for, it's not that he's not worth 300k. I just wouldn't pay 300k for him. He's better than Bosch, but at the same time, if Bosch was 100k and Big Blake was 300k, I would tell you to get Bosch because he's really not that much worse. Marquise Johnson. You can get this dude for under 15k. Um, he doesn't have a range extender, so his price is ridiculously low just based solely on that. But he's a 6'7", 2 guard. You can apply range to him so you can get him up to gold for relatively cheap. I'm not going to sit here and tell you this guy is a really, really good card, period. Like, Trevor Ariza is arguably a better card than Marquise Johnson overall, um, though Marquise Johnson is a better rim attacking card, so depends on your play style. But I think it's worth paying 10 Gs or so for this card just if you plan on doing Spotlight Sims later because there's not very many good guards for the Milwaukee Bucks in their history, especially in 2K in general. Um, because they refuse to give Monte Ellis and my boy Brandon Jennings any shine whatsoever. So, Or OJ Mayo. We're going to have to band together and get an OJ Mayo card. We need it. Uh, Rui Hachimura is relatively good. I would say he's about as good as like Rudy Gay or Kyle Kuzma. I think they're all kind of in the same vein or even Paul Millsap. Like they're all like right around each other as far as like how good they are. They all do one or two things a little bit better than the other ones. But eh, depending on Rui's price. Like, Kyle Kuzma is about 40 k If Rui, Rui's down about 15 or 20 um, last I checked, which is, like, a pretty good price for him, I would say he's more worth it based solely on that. Though you're going to run into some issues shooting. He also does not have a slithery finisher, which you'd be surprised how important that badge is, especially for someone who attacks the rim like Rui does. I promise. JaVale McGee. First off, lost in this set because everyone hates the idol sets, which whatever i think this set was actually pretty good but a lot of people don't not good but very mid you know very okay we got a three-point shooting javel mcgee out of nowhere he doesn't have range extender but it can be applied to him but like he's like a very good budget shot blocker and if you're trying to build an all-time wizards team he's definitely a card that you want especially with their distinct lack of big men also, he has 31 Hoff badges, which is, like, way too many for JaVale McGee to be having. Um, he does lack some shooting badges. He has, like, good corner shooting badges, but he doesn't have, like, range extender, space creator, flexible. And I don't think it's really necessarily worth putting all those badges on him just because it would be a lot of MT. But picking that card up for about the 5K he's going for is worth it. Trevor Ariza is going for about 10K. On the high side, about 15 and I would say he is one of the best value cards in the game. Like, he's really good. Um, it just depends how you play with your shooting guard. Like, if you use your shooting guard as a primary ball handler or you're using him to attack the rim, Trevor Reese is really not going to be that good for you. But if you use your shooting guard as a pure 3 and D cone and you want someone that's just going to sit out there and knock down threes, be a big intimidating presence, like, Trevor Reese is pretty good for that. And it's not like he can't attack the rim or anything. I mean, he can, but it's not like a strong suit. Um, I would compare him to Darius Miles. Like, they're very similar. I think both of them play better at the small forward, but they do have the option to play the shooting guard if you want them to, where they do have a massive height advantage. Like, Darius Miles is going to be a more athletic, rim-attacking version, whereas Trevor Ruiz is going to be more of a pure 3 and D guy. Uh, so it just depends what you're actually looking for. But these two guys are really excellent budget options as far as the guard or wing position. Norman Powell, I don't know what's up with this card. Like, even the CPU or another player that you're playing, this card makes so many whites. It's absolutely infuriating. He's really good. You can get him for about 3K. Especially if you're building, like, an all-time Raptors team. He's an excellent budget guard. His jump shot is, jump, is base 32, which is the same as Rondo, but I don't understand what's happening with Norman Powell's. I think it, maybe it's the release 80 upper. He makes so many whites. It's absurd. Like, he could be ice cold, and he'll still drain whites on slightly early. It's like it's nothing. It's I don't know what is going on. Got to be some sort of hitch. 
Ryan Hollins. I mean, all-time Clippers team for spotlight sims. He's going to be helpful. He's massive. They made it so, like, his guns don't look as big. It's like last year, if you remember the Ryan Hollins cards, he had, like, the most gigantic biceps for no reason. And they didn't really do that with this card, but he'll be good. So we got the Jordan Takeover event in 2K, which, like, they nerfed the odds for the vault and for the actual prizes to show up on TTO, so there's not going to be as many Jordans up there. Personally, I really wish that they would, uh, A, don't make it as RNG, and B, put a limit on the amount of these cards that you can get. Like, look, I get it. I like grinding for a bunch of free obols to make a bunch of MT. Like, I totally am on board with that. I know a lot of people watching this are going to be doing that. But it just sucks for, like, players that don't play this game as much. If they just want to come on and get that Jordan, like, they should have an easier time getting it. Like, period. Um, I say once you get a Jordan, your odds get nerfed. Like, once you get one of those Dark Matters, your odds get nerfed for a Dark Matter or something like that. I just want everybody to have that Dark Matter Jordan. Like, that would be cool. Especially, like, newer players and stuff like that. People who don't play the game very often. It'd be cool for them to have the same opportunity. Though it is RNG in the vault. So, I've seen people get it in, like, two games. This Opal Jordan, though, I will say... He's still a Michael Jordan card. So, he's going to be slightly expensive based solely on that. But he looks to be trending towards about 30k MT. And I gotta say, for 30k MT, he's a really good card. I mean, yes, if you really look at it badge-wise and stats-wise, there are, like, diamonds that have better badge st and stats than that Michael Jordan card. But at the same time, like, getting an MJ for 30k that's still more than usable is, is sweet. I need him for my all-time Bulls team. I want to put Jordan next to Kirk Heinrich, which... Honestly, if there's an ideal teammate to put next to Jordan, it is Kirk Heinrich. He is the perfect teammate to put next to Michael Jordan at the point guard position. Which, I mean, honestly, yeah, I mean, they already won six championships in the 90s. I don't think we could really win any more, realistically, unless Jordan didn't retire for those two years. But, like, yeah, I don't know. Kirk Heinrich would have still won six, though. That's all I'm saying. Rim Protector is very expensive. Bronze is going for about 12k, whereas Silver is going for around 13k. If you have these sitting in your collection, I highly recommend selling them. Most big men are already going to have Rim Protector. I mean, you can badge up your point guards, which is the reason these badges are so expensive in the first place, is to put them on smaller point guards to guard against like Ben Simmons and the bigger point guards that we have. Gold's going for like a thousand though. You don't really need to even do anything about gold. Um, as far as other badges that have gone up in price, Range Extender has gone up in price a bit, um, just because guys like Javel and Marquise Johnson don't have range, but he's still relatively cheap. Like, you can get it for around 5k, which is not a bad price. I mean, if you want to use Javel and you buy him for, like, what, 7 or 8k, and you want to put Range Extender on him, paying an extra 10k isn't that big of a deal. Um, so, there's also these packs running around during the Jordan Takeover event. Which, like, I've only received one of them in all of the games I've played. Look at how many Stocktons I have. Jesus. All right. But randomly, there's these little, like, Jordan question mark packs, which I don't know what's inside of them, so I'm just going to open them while I record this uh, because I don't know what's in here. It's probably something stupid, but, you know, I've seen people get Dark Matter Jordans out of these, and I got, yep, that's what I thought it was going to be. It is a gold Jordan shoe. <sighs> Look, if you were going to put shoes in here 2k like at least make the drops a lot heavier like every win you get one or whatever because like i've gotten one in all of the games i played this weekend and i got one gold jordan shoe so i got 300 mt basically what i recommend doing this weekend play tt triple threat offline it's the least frustrating and the most rewarding there's a four chances to get something better than a token or a ruby michael jordan which do not get me wrong nine out of ten times you will get one of those two and it will be frustrating but if you don't you get a guaranteed old blur by player it's fine tto is just a sweat fest as per usual like it's <sighs> unlimited is the sweatiest game mode in the game but tto is not far behind this year just because everybody's grinding it to try to stack jordans up and make a bunch of mt which is why a TTO limit should have been put in place because it's annoying for everybody else. It's ugh, frustrating. So, Nurkic is the free reward. He is 
very okay. He's not incredibly good, um, but he's solid. And I do recommend getting all of them because to get the top secret Opal on Monday, you do have to have all of these reward cards. So I would try as hard as possible to make sure you get that by the end of the season. If for no other reason, just for spotlight sims that we're like eventually going to get, having that extra player on a roster will help. Um, and some of those players that we got are helpful in themselves. Like Bruce Bowen is helpful because there's not a whole lot of guards for the Spurs um, that don't cost a lot. And Nurkic is helpful because there's not a lot of big men for the Blazers, etc. Um, season 6 final 2k tv and i believe the last word is yep code um that's a free locker code what does it get you i'm um, an idols pack whatever like it's probably gonna have like a bronze player in it or something stupid or an emerald if you get one of the more recent packs but free packs are free packs so let's drop this ball i usually drop it over on the right side just because worst case scenario well unless it hits middle I'm at least getting a, oh, I might have spoken too soon, a Kevin Garnett pack. The last thing I want, literally the last thing I want on this board is a Yao Ming pack. I will take Anthony Davis over Yao Ming all day, okay? That's not how that was supposed to go. Like, that's the one thing I don't want, which is probably why I'm going to get it up. Oh, okay, I was about to say, I'll take a Garnett pack. That's totally fine. Like, okay, yeah, I'll take a Russ pack. That's cool. I probably won't get anything out of it, but it is what it is. Anyways, it has been your boy Cheap Ludes. Thank you for watching the channel. If you're new and you have made it this far, please subscribe. Check out my description for all my stuff. Like, all my stuff's in there, including the second channel that I'll be uploading videos on tonight. So, hey, I know you want to. And I'll be doing the Squad Tip series tomorrow.